hello. Welcome back for part two of a multi-part series where we will be exploring how to monitor performance of the Gadas Vim 2 by using a Linux script and how to add a heatsink. Before we begin, we'll want to understand how the Vim 2 performs fresh out of the box. To do this, we'll run some benchmarking software called Sysbench while monitoring the CPU temperature, speed, and time. This will tell us how long the Vim 2 can perform under load. There are two basic utilities that we can use to understand CPU performance and GPU performance. These two utilities are called Sysbench and GLX Gears, which is part of the Mesa Utilities Package. This software is available through our friendly apt-get package manager, so without delay, let's go ahead and install the software. First, open the Mate terminal. A keyboard shortcut that I like to use to open the terminal is Control alt t Next, we should run sudo apt-get update so we can be sure that we're installing the current version of the software and all the dependencies. After the update has completed, install sysbench by typing sudo apt-get install sysbench and sudo apt-get install mesa utils to install glx gears. Next, we need a way to monitor the CPU temperature and speed. An easy way to accomplish this is by building a script. I will show you the code I use for my temperature monitoring script. However, I will not cover the script building in this video. If you'd like another video about script building, please let me know in the comments. To build the script, we need to start by creating a file with the touch command followed by the name of the file. I will use touch tempmon.sh. Next, we need to make it executable, and we can do that with the chmod command. So chmod plus x space tempmon.sh. Now, let's add the contents of the script to this file. Don't worry if I move too quickly through how the script works, as I will leave a copy of it in the comments. The way this script works is by calling three system commands, the date, the CPU temperature, the CPU speed, and printing them on the same line. Next, we will allow the commands to sleep for 60 seconds before executing again in an infinite loop. Let's save and run our script. To save, I like to use Control X as this exits nano. Confirm the save by pressing Y and then call your script by using period forward slash and then the name of your script. If everything has been typed correctly, the temperature will be displayed and the script will pause for 60 seconds. To stop the script, simply use Control C to break the command. Now, let's move on to preparing the benchmarking software. I will be running GLX Gears and Sysbench at the same time because GLX Gears will give work to the GPU and Sysbench will give work to the CPU. We will need three terminal windows open, one to monitor our temperature, one to execute Sysbench, and one to execute GLX Gears. I like to prepare each terminal window with the commands so I can easily start everything at the same time. For the temperature monitor, we will simply type period forward slash tempmon.sh. For GLX gears, we will simply type GLX gears. For sysbench, we have a slightly longer command shown here. I recommend calculating prime numbers to 1 million as it should take the Vim 2 between 10 to 15 minutes to run this benchmark. I have found that 10 minutes is long enough to understand temperatures for an actively cooled setup with a fan and 15 to 20 minutes is preferable for passively cooled systems. Since I am adding a heatsink and not a fan, I have a passively cooled system. The Vim 2 has a maximum CPU operating temperature of 80 degrees Celsius and if that temperature is reached, it will slow down the CPU compromising overall system performance. During our first test, we've reached the maximum CPU temperature after 5 minutes, and throttling of the CPU becomes more apparent after 15 minutes. I have a tiny heatsink that I've scavenged from old computer parts, so let's add that to the Vim 2's system on a chip and run our tests again. For this project, 
you may need a triangular screw bit, anti-static PET plastic, a knife, a marker, the heat sink, and thermal transfer material. I will be using thermal tape to mount my heat sink. As you can see, I'm using the PET plastic from a flash drive that I've recently purchased. First, I'll start by overlaying the plastic and marking the shape of the Vim 2. Unfortunately, my plastic is just a touch too small, so I need to hold it at an angle. Use a marker and draw the outline of the Vim 2, marking the screw holes and the processor. The processor is the chip with the S912 printed on it. Please be very careful when cutting the plastic, as I don't want to hear about any injuries in comments. Next, we'll need to remove the screws from the Vim 2. These screws are the only thing holding the multiple layers of plastic and the board together, so take care to keep everything together. If you choose to take the Vim 2 completely apart, be aware that two Wi-Fi antennas are around the edge and forcefully disassembling the Vim 2 could break these antennas. We're almost finished. Add our freshly cut piece of plastic and the four screws to put the board back together. All we need to do is prepare our heat sink and mount it on the processor. It is always a good idea to ensure your processor is clean before mounting a heat sink. Before shooting this video, I had disassembled my board and cleaned the processor with some isopropyl alcohol. Now that our heat sink is mounted, let's see if it has an impact on our temperatures. Success! Our board seems to have stabilized around 75 or 76 Celsius and there's no throttling. It is winter time here and my ambient room temperature is about 18 Celsius. This solution keeps my board about 53 degrees over ambient, so in summer months, when my room temperature is around 27 Celsius, I may experience some throttling. The solution is not perfect, but it's a start, and adding any type of a fan will guarantee our board will stay cool. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you try something similar with your Vim 2, please drop me a note in the comments with your results.